The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 23rd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject, and if you'd be good enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you get all U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's down by 203 points, about six tenths, seven tenths for the S&P, 32, a little over 1% for the NASDAQ 100, 159. The Russell's down eight tenths or 15 points. The semis are down one and eight tenths or 65 points. Trending's up three tenths percent. That's a 50 point move there. Gold is up 10 bucks with silver being off eight cents. Slice week crude is back a buck. Natural gas is off four pennies. The 30 Treasury printed out at 127.23. That's up 23 ticks. New U.S. dollar index, I do have a 10 minute delay. It shows it printing out at about 102.61. That's up 616 ticks. Leading the charge, dollar-wise, the upside, you've got CarMax up eight bucks and change. That's a little bit, almost 11%. Burlington stores, nearly six bucks, a little over three and a half percent. Floor and decor holdings, nearly 5%, 440. Uh, you've got uh, Celsius holdings up four bucks and change. That's a 3% move. Wingstop up four bucks, 2% move there. The shakers to the downside, Mercado Libre up 3.5%, 43 bucks. Asmill holdings, 18 bucks, 2.6%. Avgo, 18 bucks, 2%. Sarepta Therapeutics is down 11 bucks. That's nearly a 10% move. And Lamb Research up nearly 2%, 11 bucks to the downside there. So let's begin our day by taking a look at where we at market breath. Well, let's let's do this. Let's answer the first question. First question came in from Defining Time, and Defining Time wants to know, he's been in the queues since uh, Tuesday, I'll assume Tuesday morning, so he's pretty close to break even, maybe there's a little bit of profit in it, and the question is, get out or hold? So really answer that question, what we need to do or what we should do, or what, well, let's do this here. Let me stay on this page. I need to show you one thing about the cues. The first thing is, if you take a look at, I'll just simply expand out the page. So defining time, here you've got the end queue. And on this page, it's a bear structure daily profile. And what price did yesterday is it got down to test support. Didn't get right down to it, it got close enough. The actual low yesterday, 14,964. The bottom of the profile, 14,950. Top of the profiles at 15,370 out there. So you've got a consolidation going on inside here. I would normally say if price closed below 14,950, then you would jettison the position. I would say, okay, the trend is changing, but I can't say that. And the reason I can't, I mean, I can say that, but I won't say that. I'll just give you that data point. What I then will say is I'd say, let's go move over to the white background chart so this can help me, so it can help you understand the point that I'm trying to make, if that's even possible. Here we take a look at the daily time frame chart, and we'll also expand this out. You see there's a slightly different profile. And that different profile, now we're using the exact same data here. That profile is 14,845. So the range before you get a 
confirmation, let's say, to jettison your position, so that would certainly be flat or go short, would be a break of support. And so that range is going to be 14,845 to 14,950. So we wanted to get that. You want to be able to use those profile levels. Even though we have two different ones, that's okay. As more information is better than less information here. So we know that. Now, what else can we learn about the NQs? Well, basically, every single time frame that we have up here has a bottom pattern. That's the five hour, the four hour, the two hour, the 60 minute, 30, 15 minute, and the 10 minute charts. The daily doesn't have a bottom pattern. It's just consolidating with inside its profile. If we switch over to the five hour chart, yesterday, and I believe I was doing this when we were on the air, the pattern didn't complete until 2 p.m. It's this confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. It did that because it formed that nice bullish engulfing candle. So we've got a bottom there, and that says this. That says if you close below or this close below, certainly on a five-hour time frame, below 14,970, that's going to suggest lower price. Well, we know we've got 14,950 and 14,845. Those would be the two levels you would be looking at. But you do have a valid bottom right now in a five-hour time frame chart out here. So would I, could I tell you to um, go short here? The answer would be no. Would I tell you to buy here? or well, you're already in, so it's really get out or hold. Since you're this close to basically your break even on Tuesday, I'd, I'd stay. At least that's the message of the five hour chart. The four hour chart also has a confirmed Gartley buy pattern. Now it's Gartley buy pattern, didn't confirm until early this morning at 6 a.m. And then, uh, no, I take that uh, back. That was at 6 a.m. yesterday. Yesterday, is that right? Yeah, okay, it is yesterday. I want to confirm that by the D point pattern at breakout support of 14,976. So, again, you're looking at yesterday's low. The two hour chart, this confirmed a Roge Mintum indicator bottom. That is still in play. The same thing with regard to the 60 minute chart. The same thing with regard to the 30. Now, the 30 minute chart and the uh, has a uh, uh, by the D point pattern. And uh, you had a Rose Mintum indicator bottom on a 60 minute chart. That was one that formed yesterday. Today, you also have a buy the D point pattern. Now, what those, what those uh, instruments need to do, or this instrument needs to do for this time frame, 60 minute, 30 minute, really all of them, in order to suggest that there is upside movement, the reason that you got into this trade, they would have to take out, price would have to take out those oscillator and change lines. And they haven't done that as we speak just yet. The 15 minute has a TD nine count bottom. Roach went to indicator bottom on the 10 minute chart here. I would say the level that needs to fall to suggest that maybe there's some room for this rally to run would be 15,129. So you've got bottom patterns on the majority of the time frames that we look at, a consolidation going on inside the daily. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong. If, if this really doesn't take off, would I hold this over the weekend? I, I wouldn't see a real benefit of necessarily doing that, knowing that we do have a top daily top inside the NQ out there. But intraday, there's no reason for you to not hold on to it and see how this uh, market uh, responds going the rest of the day. I'd have a stop in place, that's for sure. So I do hope that helps you out. Now, defining time, I can switch over and take a look at the cues, which I will do here. They're not really going to provide us, while well, they shouldn't provide us with the type of information that we just got off of those charts here. Here on the daily time frame, 358.47 is the bottom of its profile. Now, I'd really be using... That's not it. I would really be using the. That's not it either. Jeez. Uh, I would really be using the uh, NQ charts that we took a look at for your signals out here. But you do have a new profile, 358.47. It matches on both sets of charts that I use out there. So you could use that. If you see a close below that, odds favor that there's a change in trend. So defining time. I hope that helps you out. We get back to this break. We're going to take a look at Costco for one of our dinners. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Still got all U.S. equities uh, trading to the downside. Dow's off about 197. S&P down 32. Nasdaq 173. We're taking a look at uh, Costco. Uh, the question here, this comes in from Zip inside the Tiger's Den. And the question about Costco is buy, hold, or basically uh, stay uh, flat out here. So we take a look at Costco. We can see this bottom way back here. When I say way back, I'm talking about March 3rd. That's the low out here. The bottom of the TD9 count. It has then since gone on to make an A to B equals C to D pattern. And it confirmed that sell point out here with this bearish engulfing candle that was back on June the 16th. I believe that was last um, last Friday. So you've got a confirmed sell pattern out here. Now, when you get a confirmed sell, all that it really gives sellers the right to do is push back and try to test support. In the case of Costco out here, it has a bullish structured profile. What I mean by that, the top of the profile is where sellers are at. The bottom of the profile is where buyers are at. The center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value within inside this range. Since buyers and sellers, okay, the center is closer to the bottom. That's why I refer to it as a bullish structured profile. You've got all kinds of buyers at 514.71, and you have, let's say, 50% uh, buyers at 518 out there. So bullish structured profile. So if you were looking to get in, you'd want to do it in the support zone. That zone is between 514.71 and 518.85. Price is below its green oscillator and change line with that top that's in place out here. So is it a is it a sell? It's not a sell because, first of all, it's not a sell from the standpoint of going short Costco because price held, the, even though you've got a top, but price held that bullish structured uh, profile level. Uh, is it a time to buy? I would say no. If you wanted to try to begin a position here because you had a real hankering to do that, then you'd be looking for it between that 514.71, 518.85 area. As we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart shows a nice rally over the past um, several months out here, uh, several weeks. 
price is attaining its prior swing point. Now, on a weekly basis, this swing point is from December 2nd back in 2022, and the volume there was 17 million shares. Last week, you were pushing up with 9.4. This week, we're short a day, but it's only 4.3. So you're pushing up with light volume. Not really an encouraging reason to go ahead and enter a position. And on a monthly basis out here, you just have a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profiles out there. So not really providing us with a ton of information. But it's not uh, screaming out to you and I that uh, this should be a buy. Lastly, I don't know if it's lastly, but let's take a look at what Costco typically does. It's seasonal pattern. Now, what we can see here is that we have a nice bottom that began on May 25th out here. We've seen really quite a rally since then. We've gone from about the 475 level up to about 531. Well, let's take a look at Costco over the last 37 years because that's all the data that we have and understand its seasonal pattern. And that's what's up on your screen right now. The red vertical line is basically where we're at today. What we can see about Costco is it typically forms a bottom right around May 25th. I don't remember what that date was. When was this bottom? May 25th? Are you kidding me? How does that work? I don't know how it works. I just know that it does work. But over the over the 37-year history of, I didn't make this stuff up, uh, over the 37-year history for Costco, and you can see here by taking a look at the bottom area, we can see that June is a uh, pretty decent performing month. Not as good as November, followed up by March, but then June, well, even October is uh, is pretty good. Uh, June is the fourth best month of the year for Costco. And what Costco typically does is it typically runs into to the early part of July, maybe around the 15th, 16th or so, and then it begins its move lower that move lower take us into October 25th. So that being said, knowing that you've got, uh, you know, what you get in now on June the 24th, knowing that this thing is likely to top here in the early part of July, just something for you to consider out there. If you get a pullback into that support level, you want to take a trade, just be aware of the uh, seasonal pattern that is out there and be aware that she's the last bottom that formed tied right into that seasonal pattern. So I don't know if the top will do the same. And we already have a top that sell the D point pattern, but maybe that gets negated and there's another top that forms right around July. So zip, I hope that that helps you out with regard to what's going on inside of Costco. Uh, make sure I'm clear on that. I would not be buying it. The only buy zone could be in that 514, 518 area. Uh, let's take a look at our next question. This comes in from Pat. A past question goes like this. What number should he use for the apogee and perigee pivot point? So that's a great question out there. Uh, apogee, that's when the moon is furthest from Earth during the current lunar cycle, came in yesterday at exactly 1235. Now, I realize you can do some searching on the Internet and you're going to get bogus bad data. Where that information comes from is the new American ephemeris. ephemeris. That is the Bible for celestial times. Uh, where things are positioned, uh, you, you you grab stuff off the internet. It, it's not tying at least into what we're using it for and how we use apogee and perigee. The answer to your question is, I use it right the open right at that moment in time. So in this case here, I took this chart since it was uh, twelve thirty-five. I went to five minutes uh, increments out there and used the open of price at that specific point in time, that specific moment. So that was yesterday at 1235. So as an example, for the ES Mini, that number is 441275. In the case of the NQ, that number is 151375. In the case of gold, it's at 192670. And in the case of light sweet crude, that number is at 6946. That's the August contract that we're talking about both for gold and for light sweet crude. So those would be the numbers to pay attention to. Why is that important? It doesn't happen 12, well, 24 times of the year, 26 times of the year, basically, where it works 100% of the time. But you would be amazed at how well this acts, and for reasons I can't tell you, as support or resistance levels, because it is really a random, but it's not so random, it turns out. It really is a random data point, but it's not really that random. So I pay attention to it, and I hope that that helps you out, Pat. And thanks so much for the uh, question. Uh, any other questions? Let's see here by email. There is no other questions by email. I think I have gotten to everything, but let me just run through here to find a time to welcome Steve. Auto Nation, Phil Trade. So let's go over and take a look at AN as the ticker symbol out here. See what screens am I on? Oh, I wasn't showing you here. My apology. Here are the data points change windows. I'll go back for the Apogee pivot point. So here you've got that. 
So here's the charts for Apogee. You guys in the den, you can make a uh, copy of it or what have you. And so you've got it for uh, four inch with the ESNQ, gold on the lower left, and then light sweet crude on the uh, lower right out there. Now let's go back and take a look at AutoNation. That's for Phil. And let's uh, see if we can understand what Phil's question is. We have to read it, obviously. But let's get those white background charts. Phil says, Steve, is AutoNation finishing up a move? Well, you know what it's doing today? Uh, on a daily basis, Phil, it's negating a TD9 count top. So this tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside, at least on the daily time frame. Okay, so that's what it says for the daily. Now let's take a look at the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame, let me just open up this chart, see if uh, that's a all-time high. Looks like it is. So what price is doing right now, it's taking on its all-time high. That's from the month of that's from the week of February 17th. The volume on that push higher was 6.3 billion. No, 6.3 million shares. This week, and we're a day short, we're at 1.6 million. Is it the question was, is it finishing an up move? It's running into maybe natural resistance by not having the volume to clear that. But on the daily time frame, we'll come back to this, Phil. You're now negating a TD9 count. That says that that high is going to at least get tested, or at least should get tested. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Auto Nation out here. Uh, trading up about two and a half percent today, taking out a, a TD nine count pattern on its uh, daily time frame. We don't have any kind of uh, topping signals on the weekly or the monthly. We just have price running in resistance. Now, on a monthly base, that was a bearish shooting star candle. So that's where your resistance is at at that one fifty eight thirty. On a monthly basis, that month, the month of uh, February twenty twenty three, had sixteen point nine million shares. This month. Uh, which we're going to end here pretty soon. We're only about 9.8 million. So you're moving up into that. Doesn't mean it can't take it out, but you are moving up to that uh, area with lighter volume. And uh, so maybe it sets up somewhat of a consolidation. I, I just don't know. But your question was, is the move over? And I have to say, the daily time frame is saying it's not. But you know, maybe all it's going to do is test that high. Now, if it takes out that high, what you're going to get is a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So just to take a look at that, I'm not saying that that's what we have, but that's certainly something you want to uh, consider if you are long this instrument. So the A to B would kind of look like, well, really, here's here's what we would do. We go all the way up that all time high. And then what we do is we copy that and paste it and move that down to where the new C point would be at. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. That would be about right. I can't even, I've got to scrunch the chart in order to even do that. But here would be the A to B equals CD pattern. Obviously, we don't have the volume. Do you have to have the volume in order to get an A to B equals CD pattern? The answer there is absolutely not. It's just when you get it, it gives you, maybe we think, we believe that it increases the odds uh, that will at least go ahead and complete the pattern. In this case here, about 183.23 would be a price projection out there. So if you're in AutoNation, I'd stay in it. Um, did we look? Well, I don't think we looked to see what its uh, seasonal pattern is. We should do that. So let's take a look, see if we've got the date on it. AN takes a moment here to see if it will pull that up. If I get nothing, such as I've got right now, we don't have AutoNation. So I can help you out with AutoNation on its seasonal pattern out there. Wish that I could, but uh, you've got the data. Uh, you've got the data as we speak right now. So I do hope that that helps you out. Uh, the next question, uh, going back to. Um, Apogee and Perigee. So let me just switch back to those charts. The question is, what software do I use? But maybe I'm not understanding the question. So if you use any charting software, first of all, all you need to know is the data points. When is the next Apogee? When is the next Perigee? Here is the uh, chart. And then you're using, so I'll just simply open up my ES mini chart. I'll put it to a five minute time frame since we know that Apogee came in at 1235 exactly. So I'll just simply pull this back. And right here, this is the candle, 12.35. If you take a look at my uh, uh, screen and at the bottom, you see 12.35 for June 22nd out there. Uh, that open, well, it's hard to read that, 44.12.75. So that's what just, and draw a line. Now, you can do this. I haven't tested it out. You can do it on your other, since this occurred at 12.35 while the mark was open, you can try uh, putting that line on the instruments that you have a long position on. Here you can see how, um, in the case of uh, Apogee and the ESB, that's a five-minute time frame. Price got up to that level back here at uh, 3.15 on June 23rd. We can see how that acted as resistance. It was a random point, but it's not so random. Uh, why is it not so random? That's a great question. That's because other trading houses use this. I guarantee you they use this. Now, maybe that wasn't your question. Maybe your question was, where do I get the data points? So this is the... Uh, 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 these are the uh, uh, aspects that deal with the moon out here. This goes from uh, 2001 to 2100. So you got June 22nd here. You can see Apogee came in at 1835. This is all. This is the New American Ephemeris. That's all been digitized. I've got 300 years worth of data out here. I could get more if I needed it, but 300 years was plenty of data. And uh, so the next uh, cycle, the next uh, lunar aspect that comes in that we would pay attention to be the full moon. That's on July 3rd. Now, you must understand that this shows 1835 in the time frame. That's because it's using uh, a different time zone. It's not using the Eastern time zone. So what you have to do is using ephemeris time zone. So you have to back this back. You back it back by five hours when we're in daylight savings time and back it up by four hours when we are not in daylight savings time. Uh, the full moon, you'd have to do that with, with any of these time frames out here. The next perigee is at 2239. That is on Tuesday, July the uh, 4th out there. So in that case, the market will not be open. Um, the futures market, though, the futures market will be, it likely will be. 
I'm not sure. We'll have to see. I, I'm not sure what's actually open on on uh, July 4th out there. But what you would do, what you would use there if the market is closed, you would use the close of the prior session and the open of the current session, and then you really just have to watch how price deals with both of those lines out there. So I hope that that DKC. I hope that that answered your question with regard to Apogee and Perigee. Again, the data points come from the New American Ephemeris. You can buy that. It's not an expensive uh, book out there, and you can have the exact time frames, or you can just uh, search for them on the internet. And use the wrong times. That's really up to uh, that's really up to you. Uh, the next question coming in from John Balai wants to take a look at ticker symbol ELF. So uh, ELF, I uh, don't know what that is, but uh, let's go find out what it is and what maybe it's doing. So this is getting populated on my screen. That is ELF Beauty Inc. Trading out right now at about 109.83. Now, what you could get today is a Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top Jambalaya. Uh, if this generates a bearish reversal candle, right now you've got a bearish sash candle, this would generate a Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top. Now, if this were the close, let's just say this was the close and you and I were looking at it over the weekend, well, we would say that even though you've got a confirmed top, Rosamentum indicator top, its overall signal is neutral. The reason that it would be neutral is because price is above the top of its profile, 107.15, and it's above a green oscillator and change line. That is a very strong momentum level. So you wouldn't be selling this even though you have a top, but you would be cautious, that's for sure. If we look at the weekly time frame, this thing is really stretched out here, but it is taking out a Rosamentum indicator top. So a close above, I can't tell which high it is, it's 108.43 or 108.45. A close above 108.45 negates that signal and tells us about a further move higher. That would be a strong move. And on the uh, week monthly time frame chart, it negated its TD9 count right away. So it tells you about strong momentum moves inside this instrument, ELF, which is ELF Beauty Inc. And it looks like it wants to continue to move higher out here. Now, move higher to where? So that's a great question. That is a great question. Can we? I'm going to switch over to, oh, I'm on the black background search. You haven't even seen the white background search. My apology. Let me move over there. Uh, I'll just uh, quickly uh, give you that re Restate again. Here's the daily time frame, Phil. You can see today, right now, as we speak, it or jambalaya. It is a, a bear sash candle that would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. But again, price above the top of the profile and green oscillator and change line. Here you can see that last week generated a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The week before did as well. You had a shooting star bearish candle, and you had no. I take that back. Uh, and you had a key reversal bar on uh, last uh, last week out there. So close above that key reversal bar is going to say, which is likely is going to do, you've got a strong move to the upside. And you can see here on the monthly chart, no topping signal. Now, what I was going to do is go back to the black background charts and draw the A to B equals CD pattern and see what its nice next price projection level is. And we'll do that by utilizing the uh, weekly time frame chart. So, boy, there's a number of A to B equals CD patterns that you can use here. We're going to break. Stevie's going to study this. Maybe we're going to go use the monthly time frame chart just to get the cleanest. Yeah, we use that to get the cleanest. A to B equals CD pattern for ELF Beauty Inc. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a ticker symbol ELF. We're trying to figure out, hey, maybe where is this thing headed to? It has been a rocket ship. I'm on the monthly chart showing you the A to B equals CD pattern. I don't really have anything that expands out above 3.618. With that, that next target is 115.03 out here. So, you know, what do I do? There's a series of A to B equals CD patterns. As we take a look at the daily time frame out here, did that go away? I guess it did. We'll just have to draw it in here. So when I take a look at my eyes, I'm looking at the, the most recent a to B equals CD pattern that's set up on the uh, daily time frame. So for me, my eyes, what they pick out here is they pick out this is the B point. When I say this, it's a trading day of January 12th. That's the A point. The B point, that's going to be the trading section of April 24th. It does a retracement down into May 24th. The B point, which had volume of 1.2 million shares, was passed with 4 million shares out there. So you have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. You have a new profile that formed today, Jambalaya. This is below price. That is a bullish message out here. So the next price target out here is going to be 132.73. And that is for ticker symbol ELF. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's get to our next question. Next question coming in from Mimi. Mimi wants to take a look at ticker symbol MARA. So we're going to change screens here. Let's go to the white background screens. And I'll actually open up the question, make sure that I get it. Mimi just simply says, please take a look at Mara. So as we take a look at Mara out here, what do we see? I'm going to open this up on the daily time frame. Try to get a feel. I see an A to B, a C to D. That was a confirmed sell the D point pattern out there. That suggests that resistance that it really needs to take out. I'll give you the price point is at 1283. Price got up to that level out here. Um, and it found resistance, but it's not like it's it's still bullish, because you don't have a topping pattern, and you've got a uh, uh, you've got price trade above the top of its profile and above its green oscillator and change line. Your question was take a look at it. Well, from a daily time frame, it looks really pretty good. Now it does have a wave seven top. So we can see that. That's letter G on my screen out here. So really, in order for this to get further upside momentum, you need to see it close above that 1290 level. If you do that, then price should run to 1412 and 1667. That's what the daily chart is telling us. 
The weekly chart says this wants to run to 14.12. No idea whether it can get through that. That is where price broke down the last time when it formed that nice TD9 count bottom and Rose Mentum indicator bottom at the uh, lows. So 14.12 becomes the next price target. I would say the way this is traded on the daily time frame, the way that's traded on the monthly time frame, that is a very likely outcome, Mimi. A price is above its red oscillator and change line on a monthly basis. As long as that condition remains, that's signaling to you and I about a potential change in trend. That should at least take us to the 1412 level. That's, again, the weekly TD9 count breakdown area. And if price get above that, you're looking at the run to the 2335-ish range. So I hope that helps you out, Mimi. Thanks for taking the time to write in. Sat P wants to take a look at ticker symbol AAP, and he's looking for an entry point. So... This generated wave number seven bottom and a roach mentor indicator bottom. Those were both confirmed on June the 12th. Now, the volume of that uh, swing point low, that's on the trading day of earlier, June 9th, was 3.3 million shares. So far today, you are at 781,000 shares. If I multiply that times three, we're still a little bit light on the volume category, but price might be headed back there. So what I'd be watching for is that high, 64.88. You'd be watching to see what volume is doing as it comes down there. Why would we say it's still likely to come down there? And the only reason that I have for you, at least at this moment, is because price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. As I look to the weekly charts, what I don't see out here, at least nothing that stands out at me at the moment, although it's probably an A to B F. So there's A to B equals CD. So this did generate a buy the D point pattern last week when it formed that little bull sash candle. But price is still trading inside right now, the weekly swing point. So the high of the weekly swing point is 68.40. Volume there was 18.6 million. For this week, you're pulling back with 10 million. We know we're short a day. The average uh, average volume on this is about 3 million shares. So that still says, so I, it, you're inside that swing point. I really think you need to watch that swing point. You've got the daily bottom and a weekly bottom. Let's see what we have on the monthly time frame out here. The monthly is in bar number eight. And we know that uh, a bottom can form on bar number eight. It's the low of the pattern at the end of the month. If we do have a completed bar number eight, odds favor this will make a TD9 count bottom pattern. Uh, but it can be on bars nine to the bar folly, which could take us lower. So that could be a couple months. So because you have that bar number eight there of a potential bottom, I'd be watching again the daily. I'd be watching the volume. You've got that pattern out there. And if price can pull back into that swing point, again, the date of that swing point was on uh, June the 9th out there. And it's doing it with less than 3.3 million shares. If it tests it, that means it at least gets down to 66.69. So it gets to 66.68 and closes back above it on lighter volume. That could be an entry point. Just realize this thing is not proven itself to you because price was able to run up on that last bottom pattern right up into resistance the bottom of that profile so that's going to be your strong resistance level so i hope that helps you out sat p with regard to aap that's advanced auto parts greg wants to take a look at sofi out here so let's uh, see what greg's question is greg's question is um can you give me some parameters on SoFi? I'm not in, but would like to start a position. I was looking at the TD9 that was negated on April on May 31st and the current one that formed on June 13th. What do you think? Well, June 13th is a TD9 count top, so we can all see that out there. It actually completed on June 14th, the bar following bar number nine, so you get to see that in action. What has that led to? Well, it's possible that what it's leading to is an A to B equals CD to the downside. So I just want to look on my other charts. It's easier for me to quickly peek at the volume. The B point on this A to B equals CD pattern, that would be the trading day of June 20th, the volume of 49 million shares. Today, you've already done 35 million million shares. So SoFi is generating a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, it needs to still close below the B point, which is at $8.20. You're at 809 right now. So Greg, assuming that it closes below 820, you will then get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. I don't have it drawn in here, but on my other charts, it gets us down to 674. It turns out at 663 is a TD nine count breakout level. So you're looking for a possible entry area. I would say it's towards that 663 mark. It's towards the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the retracement here, which is really the low of the bar that's labeled number two up to the high of bar number three, is only a 28% retracement out there. So a very small retracement. I like to have at least a 0.382 to give you a, a real A to B equals CD. But this, the, the point here that I want to make is if 
when you get a shallow retracement, you typically do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. So just be aware of that. You're in bar number five on a, a daily basis for SoFi. The weekly chart uh, looks like this has completed a sell, the D point pattern, last week. So typically, and we'll, we'll just draw that in here. So let's go A to B. A to B right there. I'm going to move this over to see if it actually completed it. I'm going to try to move it over. There we go. It did. So now you have a confirmed sell pattern on the weekly time frame, Greg. And what typically happens when you get a confirmed sell pattern, just as inside the daily time frame, is price will get back and test that oscillator and change line. Well, on the daily time frame, it's below it. On the weekly time frame, that becomes the target. So we've got 648. We've got 674 and 663. Greg, those are your targets right now as of June 23rd. And as price gets down there, let's take a look at it again. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've gotten through all the questions, nothing else in here. So uh, we'll spend a few minutes, just a couple minutes here, showing you some of the uh, some of the sites that I saw in Egypt. So that first day was all about kind of the religious uh, churches, uh, so to speak, and get, you know, went back really to, to some, you know, 
pretty cool things. The second day was uh, was uh, searching for all of well, not all because there's 108 of them, the pyramids. So I stayed in Giza. That's really the starting point up here on the Cerro. Cairo was on the other side. It's split by the Nile River. And so our first drive was to the uh, Saqqara Necropolis to take a look at really the oldest pyramid, the oldest building structure in the uh, world out there. Then off to the Red Pyramid, the Black Pyramid, then back to the actual big daddy of them all, the Great One. So here, if you take a look at this, this pyramid, uh, the Pyramid of Dozier, I believe, is how it was built during the Third Dynasty, so right around 2630 B.C. This is the oldest pyramid. It's the oldest complete stone building, is really what I should say, pyramid and stone building complex in history ever built. And really part of my trip in going to uh, Egypt and doing that was really to see some of the, you know, as far back as you can possibly get. Most people just go take a look at the Great Pyramids out there. In fact, when we got out there early in the morning, it was ourselves and maybe one other couple uh, or two other couples that, that were there. Um, this is the Red Pyramid out here. And the Red Pyramid, uh, they call it the Red Pyramid because when the sun hits it, it gives off this shimmering red hue. It's the third largest pyramid in Egypt. This was built between 2575 and 2551 before the Common Era. So and this is this is Egypt's first attempt at a smooth-sided pyramid. I've got the arrow. If you can kind of take a look at it, you'll see uh, an area here. You'll see a little um, you'll see a little path that you can walk up. Now it's about half the way, three quarters of the way up. When you get all the way up to the top up here, in order to get in to be able to go down into the pyramid. Yeah, so you got to walk up, and this is desert. You're walking through this. Not like you're parking right next door to this here. There's the area. Here's my wife. I've taken a picture of her coming out, but you've got to walk down quite a ways, and you're bending down basically the entire way out there. Here's some refurbished work that was being done. You can see the smooth-sided aspect of it. That's what we also had to climb to get up and take a look at the other side of the pyramid. This is probably the coolest thing that we saw. This is a new ruin that they uncovered about a a year and a half ago. It's a burial ground. It is so cool. Anyways, folks, have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Take care.